So there's probably going to be some instance where you're wanting to pick up one object with another object in Blender. This can be quite simple, but also a little bit nuanced at the same time. You just need to understand the process of how it works. So I've got this animation here with this grab a claw comes in and it grabs and it moves and it releases and it picks up again and comes back to the start. So what we want to do is we want to attach this cube to this grab a claw. Now I've got an armature here that um, I've used to animate. Let me just show all the bones in there. I've got this armature here that I used to animate the claw. Pretty simple, nothing fancy. And I'm using this as the object to attach the cube to. Now you can attach this to other objects, but I think you'll probably find that an armature is probably the most common one to attach it to. Now we can't just add this to the object as a child object because it'll be attached permanently. There's no way of removing that. So what we need to do is we need to use constraints. And there's a handy little constraint called the child of constraint. And this works pretty much the same way as parenting it with the benefit of being able to animate whether the constraint is enabled or not. What you need to do is you need to bring your animation to the point where it's going to grab on. So in this case, it's right here. And so I'm going to specify with the eyedropper in the constraint that the armature and the bone, and I've specified a specific grab point. But when we put this bone in, it moves. And that's kind of frustrating, but there's a really simple fix. We just need to click this set inverse option and it'll ping it back to the position it needs to be. And now when we move the animation, it moves alongside it. But of course we want this to be controlled by the grabber and not move when it doesn't need to be moving. So what we'll do is we'll come back to the beginning of the animation and we'll turn the child of constraint off and then we'll animate that. And then we'll move to frame 48 and we can animate that on. And so now when we go through there, it picks it up and it moves it to the destination location. So then we can turn this off and animate that. But oh, it jumps back to the start position. And that's because the object hasn't actually moved. It looks like it's moved because of the constraint. But when the constraint's off, it still returns back to its original position because we haven't moved it. The way that we need to have this in a different position is we need to we need to animate it to a different position. So this needs to physically move. So at the beginning, we can add in a keyframe. So I can press K and location. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select all my keyframes, press T, and I'm just going to change this to constant because that'll help it avoid sliding around the scene. Now, if we come across to the end of the animation, when it pings back, what we can do is we can just temporarily, now bear in mind this has been animated, so this won't stay permanent. We can just click on the eyeball. It'll move to where it needs to be. And then we can press Control A and apply visual transform. And then we can press I to insert those keyframes. And now it picks it up, it puts it down, and then it lets go, which is great. So let's pick it up again. This is where you might face some problems. So when we get to the point where we want to be grabbing the object again, if we follow what we've done previously, turn on the child of and animate it. But for some reason, the cube has moved out of the way and we don't want that. So how do we put it back to where it needs to be? So this is what's happening in the background. Picks it up, teleports to there, goes back in, and it hasn't moved. So why is it, when we enable this, does it jump to the side? It's something to do with this bit at the beginning where we had to click the set inverse button. Now I'm not going to pretend I understand why it does this, but it's something to do with where the object is relative to the point where the object was bound to. So when we pick it up here, it's almost like we just moved this over here and keyframed it. That's essentially what we're doing. So how do you overcome this second problem? But the way that I do this, and there may be a better way, but I haven't come across anything so far. But if, if you know a better way to do this, then by all means, let me know. So what I'll do is I'll come to the beginning and I'll add in an empty. And let's just make this a sphere. And it doesn't need to be that big. Just make that point two. And I'm just going to call that cube ref. Now, it may be worth... This, may, this is not going to be applicable in all scenarios, but if you take a constraint of copy transforms, just simply target your object and then apply that. And that'll make sure that this will completely match this. In this example, we don't need to do that. 
but I'm just showing you it in case your object is in some obscure location just like this because that will affect things in the in the future. So the next thing we do is we need to add in a copy transforms constraint on the cube. I like to put that at the top. I don't know if it makes any difference, but that's just what I always do. And we're going to eye drop this cube ref empty. And then I'm going to take this child of constraint eyeball. I'm going to right click on it. And we're going to do copy as new driver. And then over the eyeball for the copy transforms, we're going to do paste driver. And so now when this is on, this is on. And when this is off, this is off. See the eyeball, the way it changes on both of them. And that just completely fixes the problem because what we're doing is each time we need the child of constraint to be active, we may have animated this cube to a different location in the scene. But every time we animate the child of to be on, the copy transforms moves this cube back to the location that we originally had it at. And so the offset between the cube and the, the bone that we parented it to will always remain constant. So now you could probably just put this into a collection. Um, we'll maybe just say hidden. We don't need to worry about that. So as long as we have that reference in the scene, we can pick this up and put it down as many times as we like without any problems. Just as long as you remember to keyframe each new location of the cube. If you have found this useful, then give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment if there's any thoughts that you've got and hit that subscribe if you want more Blender content.